why I'm working on this car, I don't really know. So it's currently, I think 101. Sun directly beating on me. I'm married to the game. I'm gonna pull this off then. And cool, it's probably gonna go everywhere. That's fine, right? Yeah. No, it, it went everywhere. Like you can just kind of look down and see that it's actually all on the belts. You gotta just hold put this. it under the car. Now pour it over the belts. Right there. <laughs> Is that good? Yeah. I'm doing it now. Did it go into the pan at all? Uh, maybe. So today we're trying to get this uh, fan clutch off. This nut right here. We need this special tool, which is the wrong special tool, but we're gonna try to make it work anyway, so that the pulley doesn't move. The hoses are in the way. The new hoses that we just put on. Pretty loose. Did we get it loose the other night? Yeah. Oh, lit. Yeah, wrench it. Wrench it. Fucking wrench, wrench it. Wrench it, dude. I think once it gets close enough, you can. Oh, now it is. Yeah, now you can spin it. There we go. Oh, nice. Then now this should all be able to lift out. Oh, nice. That's not bad. All right, so Not compared to the rest of the car. Let's take this inside. Do you want to cover the engine with this? Yeah, yeah. Just so it doesn't bake in the sun more? Yeah, that's cool. Look how pretty that is. My fucking engine is Hawaiian! Don't put that in the video. <laughs> Which one's missing? The techno. <laughs> how confident are you that the clutch is actually broken? Uh, not confident. There we go. Oh, hot, Steve. You're cooking. This actually come off. Oh, just like that. Did you do it? I did it. Nice. 130. Yeah, there we go. 258 now. Yeah, if it's not locking at 250, this is not working. Right. Yeah, this was outside for a few minutes. Yeah, it's 158 degrees. It's a little warm. 120. 172. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I can't get it to sit on. Try spinning to the right just to get it like centered on it. You're not, you're cross threading it, that's why. I don't think you have to kill that. Because it's... Well, it's on. Yeah, it's on. I think that's good. The uh, fan, let's get the fan. fan. Covered in water. What are we looking at here? I don't know, we that don't was, know. That looks broken though. Where is it? Look down inside here. See right here where my finger is? It is like yeah. a spring, it's almost like it, it broke. Chris, go grab that multimeter. Yeah, I think you're right. I think whatever this is is not bueno. This is the resistor that makes it a low speed, and it's very broken. It's a bypass. It's bypass. So we need a new one. Hey, why do you have that meter? Can you check? Can you check this? Is it is it these? Because those go to the fan switch, and then these click this, this one, one, and then this does nothing. So one of these is ground, one, and these are two different temperatures. So what I think happens here is this is bad. It's just triggering a relay. This has a resistor, and when it reaches a certain temperature, it'll let, it'll right. let current through, it'll switch one of these two wires. When it's at one temperature, it'll click on one, which probably sends the auxiliary fan, accessory fan, to a low speed. And then when it gets hotter, it goes to the other one, which sets the accessory fan to a high speed. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get the car up to high temperature to test and see if this is switching because I don't think it is. 101, 114, 156, it definitely should be hot enough. Grab it with no, your bare no hands. No continuity. Steve. I just heard it clicked off. I just heard it too. So, one of those is working somewhat, but we're not getting continuity. But are you supposed to get continuity? I would think so. Yeah, because it just shorts it. Right, that's it's all it's not does. enough to short the switch. So we shouldn't be getting resistance on it much at all, if anything. So let's let that cool. Uh, we tested this because this is... Uh, tell them how we tested it. Cool. Seems like I don't give a f You have walk and talk while we do it, I guess? Yeah. I'm already walking, so if you're going to start talking, do it now. Okay, so we tested this. This is the uh, thermo switch for the radiator. Um, when it hits a certain temperature, it'll short the contacts in here. Um, for the low fan speed, and then when it hits a higher temperature, it'll short different contacts for the high fan speed. Or both, not entirely short. So what we did is we heated it up to well above what its operating temperature should be to see if these short, and they did not. So we were still getting resistance on two of them, but the other one wasn't giving us any circuit whatsoever. So it was just still an open circuit. So this is what I suspected from the beginning, but I didn't know where it was or on the car. 
So that goes over here on the radiator, right here. And you have a three wire plug that goes onto that. So you have a ground and two hots for the two different speeds and temperatures. So we're gonna take this to the auto parts store because uh, online is showing a different one for this model car. Um, but this is definitely the part for this. So we're gonna take this there and see if they have this in stock and buy a new one. And you probably bring the meter and test that one too, just to make sure. That does it. There we go, we figured it out. This is 100% the problem. But what we can do is we can just short that. So what does this other lead do? That's a different speed. One of them, one well, of them is that's ground. That's gonna come on high regardless because we have the resistor. Because we have the resistor out. Did you blow a fuse? Yeah, that did. Yeah, that's the auxiliary fan relay, or uh, fuse. And then that's the low speed. That's why we shorted, because we took out the resistor. This is the low speed, this is the high speed down here, number 18. Right. That is a 30 amp fuse. The low speed is a 15 amp fuse. He's seeing if he can find somewhere that has this in stock. Otherwise, what we're probably gonna do is probably just keep this in here to plug it, so it doesn't leak coolant everywhere, and then short these two. And we fried this, which is a 15 amp fuse for fuse slot number three. That fuse controls the circuit for the other two pins. That controls this resistor that was broken that we took it off. And that's why that fuse blew, because it didn't go through the resistor, so it took too much power and it blew that 15 amp fuse. Th these two being grounded here and here is the high speed, which when that's at a higher temperature, will short those pins for that. And that goes through a different fuse, which is down here, it's a 30 amp fuse. And that just makes the fan spin at a high speed. If you can't find a new thermo switch, temperature sensor for this anywhere locally, what we'll do is we'll just short these two pins and keep this plugged in so that it doesn't leak. And then anytime you turn the key in the on position, this should turn on high speed. And then the thermostat will control the engine temp to keep it at operating temperature. In the meantime, we can use this to burp the system. If yeah, and that, I, I'm, you can use I'm optimistic about that being able to just crack loose and get bubbles out of the radiator so we can burp it from two places. Just crack it loose, tighten, crack it loose, tighten, alternate. If you can order online, we can make it work in the meantime. Can we make it work? Yeah, yeah I just explained it. All right, so make, let's make it work. So, then all right. I'll drive it to the, I'll drive it to the ash station. All right. That good ass. Okay, uh, Spark Notes version for Chris. This will switch on two different speeds when it's low speed or when it's low temperature or high temperature it'll short two different wires. One of them goes to this fuse, which is 15 amps, and goes through that resistor to turn that fan on low speed. If you short those, it's gonna blow this fuse because the resistor's not on anymore. If you short the other two, it's gonna go through this 30 amp fuse and turn that on at high speed, whenever you have the key in the on position. So if we can't get a new one of these, we can't get those to short. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna keep it plugged in so it doesn't leak coolant, and we're just gonna short those two wires and wrap it in electrical tape so that anytime you turn the key on, it'll send power to that fan, that fan will go on at high speed. And then if your car gets, it's not gonna make it too cold because if it cools it off too quickly or cools it off enough, the thermostat will close and will stay at operating temperature. But if it gets too hot, that fan is now running so you'll be able to keep it on. So you got the fan clutch working and you got that fan working. So you should have plenty of airflow through the radiator. Thoughts, what are we doing now? Just getting gas? I'm just gonna go fill this, put like 10 bucks in. Have some gas in it because it's running on basically empty. Let's go, man.